Hey folks, this is Josh. Welcome to another JS Psych tutorial. Uh, in today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to use data that you might have in a spreadsheet format and use that to control the trials that you're setting up in JS Psych. So the demo that I'm going to be working with today is a, a lexical decision experiment that I've already set up. Um, in the experiment, uh, participants are uh, asked to indicate whether a word is a, a valid English word or not a word. Um, why don't we just run through the experiment really quickly so you can see what this is going to look like. So let me pull this up on the screen here. So uh, in this experiment, there's a prime word uh, followed by a target word. So in any individual trial, you'll see two words. The first word goes really quick, and then the second word is the word that you're making a decision about. Uh, so I'm going to sort of go through the instructions a little bit quickly. So there's a little bit of practice phase. Um, and then you press a key to indicate whether the second word is uh, a valid word. OK, so uh, done with that. And this warns me that it's going to take about 15 minutes, but that's actually not true because so far all I've done is copy the practice trials into the test. So uh, we will just get the same trials. OK, so I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go back. Um, so that's the experiment that we've got. And uh, so up here in the code, I've got my instructions defined. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here because the point is really to show you how to use this CSV file that I'm going to look at in a second. Um, then in this section of the code, starting right about here, I've defined my fixation trial. I've defined the, uh, the prime trial, and I've defined the target trial. And I'm doing some computation here to figure out if the participant um, responded correctly or not. OK, then I've set up my practice timeline here. So I've got a, a practice uh, object. It's got a timeline that contains the fixation trial, the prime trial, and the target trial. And I'm using timeline variables. Uh, and if, if this is not familiar to you, you definitely should go back and look at the, the tutorials that are on the website. The, the uh, demo RT task that's on the JS Psych website talks about timeline variables. So that's an important concept to understand here before, before what I'm going to do next will make sense. Um, so I've got my timeline variable set up. Um, I've got the, the prime for each trial defined. I've got the target for each trial defined. And I've got some condition. Uh, and in this experiment, there are different conditions. So there's prime words that are um, related associatively to the target. There's prime words that aren't related at all because they're, uh, the target is a non-word. And then there's prime words and targets that are just unrelated, but it's still a valid word. Um, there's actually a fourth condition, too, that's not in this yet, which is uh, words that are semantically related, so things like synonyms or antonyms. OK, so I've got my practice. Um, and then I've got, uh, and basically, we've got three trials in the practice that are presented in a random order. Uh, and then I've got the test, which for now is actually just a copy of the practice. Uh, it's got the same exact structure, except that I've used this data here to indicate that these trials are practice trials and these trials are test trials. But what I'd like to do is replace all of this right here with this um, CSV file that I've already got set up. So uh, this CSV file has um, three uh, columns, prime, target, and condition. And then it's got um, a word in for each of the 150 trials that we'd like to run. Um, let me see if I can pull up really quickly what this looked like in, uh, in spreadsheet format. I'm just going to take me a second to do that. I'm going to uh, open this file with Excel. So if you had set up your, um, your data in a spreadsheet, it might have looked like this. Uh, and then I just saved the spreadsheet as a CSV file. Um, the important thing to note here is that when you're setting up your spreadsheet, you do need to follow a particular formatting convention, which is that you need every row to be the data for one trial, and you need every column to be the variables that are associated with that trial. That's going to be pretty crucial for how we're going to set this up in a second. OK. Um, notice here, too, that there's some a little bit of weirdness in this file. Um, so the prime words are all capitalized, and the target words are all lowercase. Um, and that was just how this data arrived when I was given this data to set up this experiment. 
And I thought it would be um, useful to show that you don't actually need to fix that here. You can you can sort of fix it in code in case you end up in a similar kind of situation. Okay, let me go back to the code here. Um, so we've got this CSV file, and a question that I get asked a lot uh, about JS Psych development is how do I how do I use a CSV file, and how do I uh, you know get it so that I, I can just take the data out of this and turn it into trials. And my short answer is that you actually can't. Um, I mean, you can, but it's it's actually quite complicated to have uh, JavaScript read from a CSV file and interpret that. But what's not complicated is to have JavaScript read uh, data that's formatted in what's called JSON format. So JSON is J-S-O-N, it's JavaScript object notation. And it like CSV, it's this very portable um, text-based data format that um, JavaScript actually understands almost natively. And I'll show you what I mean by almost in a second. So in order to get this data into JS Psych, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a tool to convert it to JSON format. Um, and there's a lot of these tools that are just available online. So um, I just did a quick Google search and I found, um, I think this was the first result, um, just csvjson.com. And you can upload a CSV file. Um, so I'm just gonna upload my CSV here. And you can see it just loads it into this uh, text box here. Um, I guess, oh, there we go, we can scroll through it. Um, and then uh, I can just hit convert and it converts it into a JSON format. And you can see with JSON format, it's a little different. Um, there's more syntax around the, the stuff that's in the, the content in the file. Um, but um, you've still got every trial and now trials are defined as within these brackets here. So it kind of looks like a JS psych trial. Um, it kind of looks like the, you know, you have a, a variable name and the, the value. Uh, but now we've got the variable name for every single trial. So what you can do with this file um, is just copy the text. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna go back into um, my experiment here. And what I'll, what I'll actually do is create a new file. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna call it stimuli.js. And I'm just gonna paste that into here. Um, now this is almost valid JavaScript um, because in JavaScript, this is an array and these are objects. And if you're familiar with timeline variables, let me go back to, uh, to this right here. So here's the practice. We have an array uh, and every trial is an object. So that actually looks identical to this. Um, so actually one thing that I could do is I could just take my test trials right here and I could paste that giant array in right here. And this would work um, because now this is a valid definition of my timeline variables, but it looks really clunky uh, in my code. It makes most of my code the definition of all these variables. And we could do a little bit better than that. So I'm gonna undo that change. I'm gonna go back to my stimuli.js file and I'm just gonna use a, a simple trick. I'm just gonna create a variable. Um, so I'm gonna say uh, test stimuli equals this. So I've got my JS file uh, and I've just added this little variable declaration at the top and I'm gonna save it. Uh, and now all I need to do is load in that JavaScript file to my experiment. So I'm gonna go back up to the top of my code. I'm gonna add a new script and I'm gonna load in stimuli.js. And now because I've loaded the script in here, this variable test stimuli um, is available to us. So I can go down to my timeline variables I can say, you know, don't use this, use test stimuli. Uh, and that should work. So let me uh, open up the experiment again. And now we should see after these practice trials, which I'll try to get through quickly. Um, now we should see that there are, yeah, various words. Um, and there should be 150 of them. I'm not gonna go through all of that right now. Uh, that would be painful for everybody. So yeah, that's that's kind of the simple way to use a CSV file and uh, convert it to JSON using a free online tool. Once you've converted it to JSON, uh, copy and paste it into a file and just add a little variable declaration at the top, load that file into your experiment with a script tag at the top, and then just use that variable as the timeline variables uh, for your experiment. Um, now, one more thing I'll show you quick, just as a little bonus. I mentioned that uh, in this CSV file that I received to set up this experiment, the prime words were all capitalized and the target words were not. 
Um, so I didn't want to, you know, go through and, and fix that inconsistency. Um, but it turns out that you can just fix that in JavaScript code. So if you have a uh, weird, you know, uh, inconsistencies in a CSV file, um, you can potentially save yourself some time. So what I did is in the prime trial, um, I'm using that timeline variable, that, that prime variable, and then I'm just, um, for safety, using the to uppercase function, which just converts a string to uppercase. So this right here gives me the string, the, the word, and then this converts it, oops, um, this right here converts it to uppercase. And then I do the same thing in the target trial. I convert it to uppercase as well. Okay, so uh, hopefully that's a, a helpful hint about how to use CSV files or really JSON files in your experiment. And I hope that it uh, makes things a little bit easier to set up in the future.